Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be doing another recent read. So I'm going to talk about some books that I read recently. I think I have, yes, yeah, six different books to talk about here. These are actually a lot of the ones that I read in December of 2021, but I'm just going to chat about what I thought about them, my reviews on them. Some of these I don't have on hand, so I will hold up a picture for you so you can see the cover, but let's go ahead and jump in. So the first one I'm going to talk about today was a book that I was so excited about coming out in 2021. It was such an anticipated release and I had it on pre-order. That was Gilded by Marissa Meyer. This is her newest installment of kind of like fairy tale retellings. She's so good at them and I was really, really excited about this one. And the only thing I knew going into it is that it was a rubble stilt skin retelling. And that sounded like so much fun to me. So I was so pumped about it. And it's, it's a chunker to be perfectly honest. And this didn't end up quite being what I expected. So this story followed this girl who lives in this village and she lives with her father. Her father works as, uh, works as, as in a mill and creates flour and all those sorts of things. And there's this wild hunt that goes, I think every full moon that rides and you're supposed to kind of stop up your ears and not listen to the wild hunt because it's like this fae thing like this fae king or whatever that rides through with his entourage and they hunt and she ends up getting caught by this king and she lies to him and tells him that she can weave a straw into gold a la rebel silkskin and it kind of goes on from there she's taken to the face castle and is made to create straw into gold which she totally lied about and so what are you going to do about that and enter in Rumpelstiltskin or basically that character. So there's a lot more to it than that, but it wasn't quite what I expected. It was more romancy than I expected it to be. I am honestly not a huge fan of like fae geared stories. It's just not something that interests me that much. Like things like the, um, oh, the Cruel Prince, that kind of storyline, that just, it doesn't really interest me that much. So I was having a little bit of trouble connecting to the story because it was a strange concept to me and I wasn't a huge fan of the fey elements. I did really, really enjoy though, the fact that there were a lot of kind of German, I'm pretty sure German inspired folk tales and things like that within this story. And it takes place I believe in Germany and I loved the descriptors of that. I loved that a lot of the writing style very much lent itself to kind of like old fairy tale style and very folksy, which I really appreciated. So that part of it I did really, really like. It's honestly been a month or over a month since I've read this. So I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering the plot to be perfectly honest. I will say that this I expected to be a standalone and it is not. I think it's just gonna be a duology, but this is not a standalone, which is not what I was expecting. It ended on a cliffhanger and I was like, oh, I guess this isn't it by itself. <laughs> so I definitely will continue it. I didn't end up loving it as much as I hoped. I gave it three out of five stars. So kind of middle of the road for me. I did enjoy it. It just felt a little bit long. I wasn't as interested in sort of the fae elements within it, but it was still good. So if you are definitely a fan of fae or you like fairy tale retellings, or you just especially really love the fairy tale of Rebel Soul Skin, I would give this a shot. So I'm glad to have it on my shelf. I'm interested to see what happens in the next installment. All right, after that, that is one that I had borrowed originally from the library. I got a picture here for you. And that is, well, let me get rid of that. Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. This is a middle grade kind of fairy tale story. It's a fairy tale retelling of the original fairy tale Snow White and Rose Red, which I feel like isn't as well known of a fairy tale. A lot of times when you hear Snow White, you think Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, right? So this is a different one though. This is Snow White and Rose Red. This is a story about two sisters. And in this particular story, we are following these two sisters and they live with their mother in the woods. Years ago, their father went to the woods one day and didn't come back. He disappeared. They don't know what happened to him. And so this is sort of the mystery of what happened to their father and what is, what is this dark thing that seems to be spreading within the woods. I didn't like this as much as I hoped I would. I heard so many good things about it and it was good. Don't get me wrong, it was good. It just felt a little bit disjointed to me. It didn't felt, feel like a smooth story tell, storytelling. That was a terrible sentence. I hope you caught what I meant by that. It was very disjointed in the chapters. It didn't feel like a smooth story. A lot of times it felt like there were just these little 
small capsules of story that didn't feel like they connected all the time all the time they do kind of connect by the end it just felt a little disjointed to me and so i didn't particularly like the writing style of this the artwork is incredible there is a lot of full illustrations in this book and they are absolutely beautiful um the writer herself is the one that illustrated it and just just you can tell just from the cover it's beautiful and there's all these beautiful illustrations so i really loved that about it it was very whimsical in that aspect but i just didn't feel like it had an in-depth enough story. It didn't feel like everything flowed well. So I ended up giving this also three out of five stars. I didn't end up loving it as much as I was hoped I would, but it was a really great story for like the fall and winter. Definitely has that like cozy sitting by the fire reading an old fairy tale kind of vibe. So I do recommend. It was good. I just didn't really love it. All right, next we have a quite a chunker of a book that took me quite a while to read, but I've been wanting to read it for the longest time. And that is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. This is the first book in a four book fantasy series. I believe it's considered YA. And I have been looking forward to this one because it sounded so interesting, but I'm afraid to read it because they're all absolutely massive. So in this story, we are following this young woman and she lives in a world where our earth has basically broken up into these floating spires or these floating bodies of land. And each spire has like its own ruler and has like a certain group of people on it. And she lives on the spire of Anima. And what most of the people on her spire can do is that they can do things with objects so they can um, easily create objects, easily repair objects. They can also animate objects as well. And her particular talent that she's able to do is that she's able to touch an object and see its history. So she's able to see who owned it last, where that object has been, what that object has been through. So she's able to learn a lot about the different people who have owned that object or handled that object. The other thing she's able to do is she's also considered a mirror visitor, which means she can walk through mirrors, travel to other mirrors. So that's where she's living, but then she is betrothed to Mary, someone that lives on another spire. And on this spire, there is so many court politics and all sorts of stuff. And it's basically a marriage of, not convenience, it's a political marriage that she's having to go into. She has never met the man that she's going to marry. And she ends up being sent to this far off spire to be with these people that she does not know. And she's having to figure out how she fits into all this scheming political stuff. Normally, that's not normally my vibe. I said normally twice, but that's not usual vibe that I go for with like more like in-depth fantasy and heavy politics, but I really enjoyed this story a lot. I had so much fun. It was thick. It took me a long time to read and it did feel long, but I will say it didn't feel like there was anything that needed to be taken out. It was well written. It was so fascinating and interesting. The world building was so complex and I loved all the characters. I loved all of the intrigue. I, I was just, it was so good. I really enjoyed it a lot and so much happened within this one book. I don't feel like it was slow at any point. There was always so much going on and I'm excited to read more. I actually just finished the second one recently and really enjoyed it. I'm excited to continue reading, but my goodness, this was a really fascinating read and it was just, I haven't read something this in depth of a new fantasy world in a long time and I really enjoyed it. So I gave it four out of five stars. I just had a great time with it and I highly recommend. So it was a lot of fun and great to read in the winter. There's a lot of winter type of areas and things in the book. All right, next, and I'm sorry, I'm having trouble talking today and thinking of really good words to say. So I'm sorry if I'm fumbling all over the place. <laughs> all right, next we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This was another anticipated read for 2021. This is kind of the next installment in the Kara Vall series, but not. It's the beginning of a new series by Stephanie Garber. She wrote the Kara Vall trilogy, which I have read, and it takes place within the same world. And we follow one of the characters from that series. But 
I would say you don't absolutely have to have read the Caraval series to read this, but it does help because there, this does take place after that series has happened. So there are some things and references to that series and what happened in that series. So I do recommend reading, reading the Caraval series before reading this, but you don't absolutely have to. In this story, we are following a girl who is absolutely madly in love with this boy until this boy ends up becoming betrothed to her sister. And she's absolutely devastated and wants to do anything to stop this wedding to be able to be with her true love. And so she ends up going to the Prince of Hearts and basically making a deal with him so that she can have this boy that she loves and ends up being way more than she bargained for. I'm gonna leave it at that with that story. There's so much more to it than that. This, this is kind of what I expected it to be, okay? So Caraval, the kind of series, the way Stephanie Garvey writes, the, the feeling of her books, they're very fantastical, they're very angsty, they're very romancy. Um, not in a like smut way in any way. There's no smut or anything like that. This is a YA series. Um, so it's not like it doesn't go into the adult realm of romance, but it's super, it's super angsty, which is not normally my thing. I'm not a fan of angst. I will say that. So I went into it knowing it's probably going to be angsty and it certainly was. There's always some sort of like love triangle or love square going on, it feels like in her books. And this one felt like that too. But the underlying storyline, which I don't, I don't want to explain because I feel like if I do, I'll spoil things. The underlying storyline was interesting. The fantastical world she built in this book was interesting. I enjoyed that aspect of it. I personally was not that interested in the romanciness. I wasn't that interested in the angst feel of it, to be perfectly honest. So this one kind of shot in the middle of the road for me. It was three out of five stars. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I did find it fascinating. One of the things that surprises me that I like about Stephanie Garber's writing is she focuses a lot on fashion. Um, these, the women especially in her books always wear very fantastical, elegant dresses, and she is really good at describing them. So I like I like getting some really good visuals in my mind of these different dresses or these fantastical places they visit. Um, there's always a ball and parties and things like that. And so I like all the descriptions in it. It's very fantastical. It's very, it's like eye candy in your brain. That's a very weird way to say that. But that's kind of what it feels like when I read these. So. I didn't absolutely love it because I wasn't a huge fan of the characters. I wasn't a huge fan of the angst, the romancy, but I did like the underlying kind of mysterious plot that we're following that does need to continue. I don't know how many books there's going to be in this series. I don't know if it's going to be three again or just two. I don't know, but there is another one after this and I definitely will read it because I want to find out what happens. Again, I gave this three out of five stars. So it was a good time. I'm glad I read it. It was fun to kind of read something that had that kind of caraval feel again. All right, next, I actually went into a few Christmas books. This is my first time around. I tried to focus on reading some books that actually pertain to Christmas to read leading up to Christmas. So one of them that I read was Comfort and Joy by Kristen Hanna. This is a book that I actually ended up getting at my Christmas book club party that I went to, and we kind of did a blind date with a book gift exchange, which was super fun. And this is one of the ones that I got. And I was excited to get it because I don't have very many Christmas books on hand. I was like, oh, I should read this one this year. But I was a little nervous because it's Kristen Hanna. And I've only read one Kristen Hanna before, before this book, and that is The Nightingale. And it was incredible uh, circle fiction, but it was also a tearjerker. And Kristen Hanna is kind of known for her books being sad. <laughs> so I was a little nervous going into this and the description of it sounded like it would be kind of sad. So I was really nervous about it. In this story, we are following kind of two different perspectives or two different storylines that merge. So we're following this woman who has recently gone through a divorce and she's really struggling getting through that. She usually loves Christmas, loves the holidays, but this time around, she's just not feeling it and she's just unhappy. She doesn't want to face the holidays alone and she decides she is going to travel just to somewhere she's never been before and just spend Christmas on her own, away from the memories, basically, and try to make some of her own new memories. And then on the flip side, we have this little boy and his father who have lost, tragically lost the wife and mother. And this little boy is just missing his mother so terribly. And 
these two end up meeting, this little boy and this woman, and this whole story unfolds. And this was not what I expected it to be, but in a great way. First of all, this book, just a couple chapters in, it slaps. It went in, and I'm not gonna say what happened, but it went in a direction I did not expect. It got real intense real quick, and I was not expecting it. Because I saw comfort and joy, it's all cute and Christmassy. Like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be so festive. And it was, but like the first few chapters in, I was like, oh, this gets hardcore. <laughs> in a way that I was not expecting at all. And I, it grabbed me, which it was a great way to start the book because it was unexpected and it grabbed me. And then again, the story just continued to go in directions that I was not expecting. And it was such a fascinating Christmassy read. It did feel kind of Hallmark movie-ish to be honest, a little bit more intense than that, but a lot of kind of like cheesy scenes as well and lots of feel good scenes, but then some tearjerker scenes and it was, it was really good. I gave it four to five stars and I really enjoyed it. I, again, I haven't really read very many kind of Christmassy specific festive books and I was excited to read it. Wasn't sure I was going to think about it because I'm not a contemporary reader really at all. And I really loved it. I thought it was so good. I highly recommend it. It was heartwarming and kind of sad at the same time. And, but it was just so good and it went in so many different directions than I didn't expect. So Highly recommend this as a Christmas read. So if you're looking to pick out some books for next Christmas, I would go for this one if you haven't yet. All right, lastly, another Christmas read, but on a completely different vein. Um, let me get my Kindle woken up again. It kind of fell asleep on me. So let me unlock it and I'll get this picture pulled up for you. This is a middle grade that is absolutely perfect for the transition from the Halloween season to the Christmassy festive season. And let me explain why. This is Christmas Dinner of Souls by Ross Montgomery. This story was so much fun. So we're following this little boy who basically ends up having to serve a dinner, like help serve at a dinner for these people that went to this college in his local, local village. But this college has a sinisterness to it because all these people come to this dinner party on Christmas Eve and they all hate Christmas with a passion. And they get together every Christmas Eve for this dastardly dinner where they all try to one-up each other to tell the scariest story. And it was so much fun. This was basically an anthology of different spooky stories. It's all put together in one story, but it's just about these different dinner guests that are telling a different spooky story. And my goodness, first of all, it was a great time to read. I had a blast reading it. I gave it four out of five stars. And these stories were legitimately scary. If I had read this as a middle grade reader, I would have been probably really freaked out by these stories. As an adult, they were pretty spooky and creepy. And I, I really enjoyed it. So if you like, if you like a good mix of some Christmas cheer smashed in with Halloween terror, this is the book for you. <laughs> I had so much fun with it. It was such a good time. And I loved all the spooky stories in it. I could see myself pulling this book out and sitting by the fire and like reading just one of the stories out loud and just creeping my little daughter out. <laughs> and then the next night reading another one, it's just like, it's like this spooky sit by the fire storytelling type thing. And it's just, it was so fun. I had a good time with it. So again, four out of five stars. Highly recommend for, especially the transition from Halloween to Christmas. But those are all the books that I read. Actually, honestly, pretty much all the books I read in December. It's nice to finally kind of wrap up all the books that I read in 2021, finishing up those wrap ups, starting up fresh for the new year. But yeah, let me know down below if you've read any of these and what your favorite book in December is that you read, um, especially if maybe if you have like a Christmas book that you read, they were like, wow, this one was really good because now I'm interested to find some more Christmassy reads for Christmas 2022. So we'll see what happens. On this side of the video over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. And this side of the video over here is a suggestion for another video. If you want to follow me, follow me. Watch another video right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. You rock. Thank you for watching me as I'm a mess. And don't forget to keep reading. <laughs> Bye.